Thank you for joining us here at BLC. Our purpose is helping people discover and develop a life in Christ. Now here is Pastor Gary Tony. Regardless of how good you are, your goodness does not get you in the family. Only Jesus, only Jesus. And he has already went to the cross. And he has already atoned us. It's a done deal. Our job is to believe that and accept it. This is why the Apostle Paul could boldly say, it's only by the grace of God that I am what I am. You know, I was thinking about Paul today as I was just going over my sermon and thinking about what this guy went through. Let let me kind of give you some reference here for a minute because when you understand the saying, it's only by the grace of God that I am what I am, Before Paul had his Damascus Road experience, he was a terrorist. He was the orchestrator of many Christians that were brutally tortured and executed and harassed, terrorized. And so you must understand that the enemy, you you realize he is relentless in your thought life. And what he loves to do is bring up what you did wrong, to bring up your past. And so I know that Paul struggled with some of these things. Remember, he says, I was a Pharisee of Pharisees. I knew the law, I knew the word, and I executed it better. And I'm sure he would probably point at some of them better than they did. You ever met one of those Christians? Huh? You wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't say it out loud, but in your mind... I'm definitely a better Christian than that one. No, we, we, we don't. <laughs> I, I've been in church for a little bit. We do this stuff. What it reminds me of, and this is a wonderful picture of this, and I use this example all the time. And for some reason, we always label the story in, in the, the Gospel of Luke, the, the story of the prodigal son. But there's actually two sons. There's the one that took his inheritance and went and squandered it away, wasted it on on partying and having fun. But there's the other brother that doesn't get a lot of recognition, but this is the one that we need to pay attention to for a second. Because too often we find ourselves slipping over into the, the other brother's perspective. He was there the whole time. In his mind, I'm sure, I never messed up like you did. Huh? Dad. I was the good one. I wasn't like him. But see, now this picture is us. Two sons, two worlds, one father. And this dad is showing us what our our father in, in heaven looks like. He said, what you don't understand, he's telling the older son, you don't get it. Our boy's back. He's back. His love never changed. And the the father embraces him and welcomes. He has to restore him because he's been out in the world and he knows he's failed miserably. The other brother doesn't know that he's failed miserably. He thinks in his religious mind he's okay because, well, I didn't do that. I mean, you know, I may have done something wrong. I don't know what that was, but, (laughs) huh? See, we have a tendency to think this way, don't we? Because we get comfortable in our Christianity, and all of a sudden, we're, we're walking higher. Isn't that right? We, we, don't, we do this, don't we, Stephen? And we find ourselves judging other people. See, Paul says it is only, say only. It is only by God's grace that I am what I am. This is the only way any of us get this. It's only by Jesus. So today as we gather around the Lord's table, let this reality settle into your thinking. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. We are chosen by him to be holy before him. Now, not in your human nature, but your born-again spirit is made just like Jesus. See, at the end of the day, when it comes to God's grace, God's goodness on our life, the question that we've all got to answer is this. Just how much of this stuff do you honestly believe? You understand it all, it all hinges on you believing. Not earning. Not, now, now, God wants us to be a doer of the word, but you've got to believe this stuff. You can't earn the grace of God. Jesus told the Pharisees, he said, 
Go, go figure out what this statement means. I desire mercy. I don't, I don't want another one of your sacrifices. Don't give me your do-good list. I want mercy. Go, go, go find out what this means. See, for us today, I, I believe it would benefit all of us if we, we learned how to extend mercy a little more than... Yeah? See, if God, if our Father sent Jesus, and he did, you, you, you believe that, right? See, you have to believe this because you, you can't see Jesus other than in us. So you have to believe that Jesus came to the planet. You have to believe that he died, got up out of the grave. See, if you believe that, then and only then do you have access to this family. You got to believe it. And if our father tells us we're forgiven, if he tells us that we're blessed, that we're prosperous, that we're highly favored, if he tells us that we're healed, then why wouldn't we accept what he says as truth? You want me to tell you why? Or do you already know the answer? Because, come on, Stephen, Stephen, you've been reading my notes, haven't you? Because we walk by sight, not by faith. We're, we're, we're this wait-and-see society. I mean, why shouldn't we believe in him? After all, he did send his son and sacrifice him so we could have this life. Why not believe him when everything isn't going right? Why not trust him? You see, whether you've walked with Jesus most of your life or you're just starting your journey because, because of human nature, now you got to get this today, because we have a real enemy, there will be times in your life that you will question the things of God. You'll question that unseen world because it won't make sense to you. God will ask you to do things that will challenge your faith, that will take you out of what you're comfortable with. And what, just like with the two sons, so often, see, the one son, he was just young and ignorant and rebellious. And he said, I'm taking mine and going out and finding out what life's about. And he did. We call that today the school of hard knocks. The other brother stayed home and to some degree did what he was told. And in his mind, he was more righteous than the other. It doesn't work that way. It's only by God's grace. Now, does he want us to, to walk out the righteousness of God? Absolutely. But in that journey, because of human nature, because of the enemy, because of circumstances and situations we face, there will be times that we are believing God and we don't see the end result yet, and we begin to question. You ever, you ever done that? Yeah. See, remember, we belong to two worlds, this natural world, but your born-again nature belongs to another world. It's called the kingdom of heaven. See, the choice of which one we live in, it's our choice. You remember God told us this in the book of Deuteronomy, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, you choose. See, it's up to us. God gave us free will by design. According to the book of Ephesians, before he even created anything that existed, he had us in mind. He knew this plan was going to play out this way. The reason that he knew, this is why Jesus is called the lamb slain before the foundation of the world, because God knew that we would screw it up. I know in your mind you wouldn't. And so what he wants us to embrace today as you have these elements is this. You've got to set your mind on a certain way of living. That's what Romans means by being transformed in the way we think so that we discover our new life and we can prove out the will of God in our life. Romans 8 actually says it like this, for those who live according to the flesh. Now, that word flesh is your human nature. It doesn't, you understand. Those who live according to your flesh, you set your mind on those things. But those who live according to the spirit, you set your mind on spiritual stuff. And then he makes this crazy statement. For to be carnally minded... Is death. Now, this word death, it, it, it does in the, the long-term sense mean that physically at some point you will die, but he's talking about being separated from God here. When you live this carnal, human nature, selfish driven, never thinking about the things of God life, then you will be governed by your carnal nature and you will be separated from the things of God. And it will ultimately lead to death 
But he's wanting us to get to the place where, where we are to be spiritually minded is life and peace. See, I want you leaving here today. I want you to take a moment as we gather around the Lord's table to let the peace that passes understanding settle into your heart. See, God is a supernatural God. It's in these times that we come to the Lord's table. You got to get this, you all, free of sin. See, some of you can't even say mm -mm, amen to that because you, you probably messed up last night. But Jesus made you free of sin. Are you, so you're saying it's okay to sin? I'm not saying it's okay to sin. sin will, I just told you, sin will kill you. But in Jesus' eyes, he has made you righteous. He made you righteous. See, mm, I, 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 I'm still getting the pushback here because some of y'all still got that religious thing going because you've been raised in that garbage. Yeah, but I messed up. Then repent. But your repentance doesn't make you righteous. Jesus alone. Only the blood of Jesus makes you only, say only. only. I, I know some of you, you're not getting it yet because you've been raised, you've been packing that stuff around your whole life. Yeah, but what, what if I mess up? Kate, what if I mess up right before Jesus comes back? Well, you're going to hell, man. <laughs> now, now, why are y'all laughing? Because you know that's not true, right? right? Right. But people think that way. Religion teaches the enemy is cunning and deceitful. I probably say this every time we take communion, but I, I want this in, in, your, in your thinking today. I think there are times, every one of us, we need to be reminded, we need to be encouraged about what Jesus did for us. See, coming to the table with all of your baggage and your junk and your brokenness. Let me take it a step further. Coming to the table with all your do-goodness. Yeah, it's at that table that you get revelation. And sometimes we just need some, uh, uh, just to be reminded of some of the, these things. This is Paul's point in Ephesians when he says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. You see, guys, communion, it's one of the most spiritual things we get to do. Now, what? I want you to think about this for a second. Think spiritual for just a minute. Now, I'm going to say this uh, because, and, and, and I, I believe I bring this, uh, the, the Lord brought it to my, my thoughts this morning because this divinely inspired place of revelation is when you get around the Lord's table sometimes. But think about this because as you're studying Ephesians this week, I want this to settle into your thinking. You're in Christ, right? And Christ is in you, right? So, in the natural, now stay with me for a minute because I'm going to take you outside this three-dimensional thinking for a second, okay? So, in the natural, wherever you go, he goes with you, right? You sure? Okay. Christ in us, the hope of glory. The Holy Spirit in us, never leaving us nor forsaking us. Now, we're in Christ. What if... Andy, where he goes, we go. Our spirit. Now, don't think three-dimensional world, carnal stuff. If Christ goes with us everywhere and he's in us and we're in him, I, 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 knew, I knew when I brought this up, you'd be like, what? Stop thinking this three-dimensional world. You are born again. You are a new creation in Christ. You are 100% spirit. Amen. See, you, you, but we think, well, it's our, our spirit is trapped in us. Is it? Where's that scripture at? If I'm in Christ, this is why Paul, now, I know, I'm, this is why Paul prays this in, in, in chapter 1. I'm hoping, you're, I'm hoping you're getting this. May the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, that we can embrace the hope of his calling, that we can walk in the riches of his glory, that we can function or we can operate in the exceeding greatness of his power. You see, guys, some of the most spiritual clarity and revelation that you will ever get will be today when you gather around the Lord's table. I want you to stop thinking intellectual stuff. Just sit there for a minute and just... Set in his presence. When you look at the presence of God in the Old Testament, there were times God wouldn't even let him come to the mountain. He said, if you touch the mountain, you're going to die. That's the same presence of God that's here today, living in us, 
thank God for his grace. Thank God for his grace. Jesus came. He said, my, he, he said, my body, it's broken for you. My blood, it was shed for you so I can give you this new life. In John chapter 6, he says this, I am the living bread that came from heaven. And if anyone eats this bread, you know, we know, we, we know these scriptures and we say them so casually, live forever. Anybody eats this bread, he lives, for, lives forever. See, we don't, we don't really know what forever means in our world today because like I've told you many times, we're in the drive through somewhere and we think, man, it's taking forever. <laughs> you, we don't know forever. Huh? Like, like that, that sweet old song says, 10,000 years from now, it's as if we just begun. Yeah, we, we don't get that, do we, Jack? Not here. Just in glimpses, Jesus came so we could have that. In John 10, one of my favorite scriptures is this. I came from heaven to give you a rich and satisfying life. I like when the Bible says he came that I could be rich. I like rich. Well, you don't need all that. Who's who talking about needing? God said he'd give me the desires of my heart. See, once again, you're letting religion dictate your thinking. He says, I came that you could have this life, a better life than you've ever dreamed of, a life to enjoy in abundance to the full till it overflows. Huh? That's a pretty cool life, right? And then you may not be walking in it yet. You're like, well, man, where's it at, Jesus? You got to start thinking spiritual. Christ in you, you in him. See, today as we, as we worship at the table... According to the book of Hebrews, when we come to the Lord, you got to come with faith. You got to come believing. You got to come to the Lord expecting things. I cannot overstress the, the, the importance of believing. I'm telling you, it, it's, it's how, let me say, faith, faith is the currency of the spirit world, of the kingdom of heaven. That's how, you, that's how you navigate. That's how you function in that unseen world that you're born into. That's how you got into it. You believed that Jesus came. You believed he died. You believe he rose again and lives in heaven. And then you asked him into your life. And you believe he lives in you. According to the Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians, that's why he takes this stuff a step further. That's why he's writing in past tense. Pay close attention to, the, to, to that this week in your, when you're doing your homework. Why, why, why is he telling us these things? Because there, this is another one of those, there is no future in God. I, I know, I'm, 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 you're like, you, you got to come out of your three-dimensional thinking for a minute. God is an eternal being. So how do you have a, if time doesn't exist, how do you have a future? God is the I am. Moses said, well, who am I supposed to tell him to send me? I am. Not used to be, not going to be. I'm getting looks like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I know, but, but as, as you take, as you let this settle in and you spend time in Ephesians this week, God's going to give you revelation. That's Paul's prayer. God, I pray that the eyes of their understanding not your intelligence, but your understanding, spiritual revelation. I pray that it, that, that it is open so that they can, they can perceive, they can see what you've already done for us. See, we have this privilege today as we come before the Lord. We gather into his presence. See, when it comes to spiritual stuff, I think so often we, we have, a, and you've heard me say this many times, we have a tendency to miss spiritual stuff because we're looking for spectacular stuff. I've heard people, people make statements over the years because, guys, the Holy Spirit is always here ready to minister. And I've heard people say, oh, well, I feel the presence of the Lord today. What about the day you didn't feel it? Was he not there? Guys, I know he can manifest at higher levels, but we, if we continually wait on an emotion to determine the, the realities of the spirit world, the enemy can always mess with you. Let me give you a perfect example of this. This just happened to Tracy uh, Wednesday night. We we're, in, we're in prayer night. And I mean, I mean, we wasn't feeling anything. Actually, I was struggling a little bit because I mean, our youth group was rocking it. 
and I want them to rock it. But I was trying to pray, and the ceiling was vibrating in here. Yeah, and, that, and we want that, but I wanted it a little quiet. And so I, I, wasn't, I wasn't feeling anything. But we're, we're, we're praying, and Tracy's sitting right here, and she's praying, and God begins to drop a vision in her of details about what our new facility is going to look like. And she saw the doors open, and she saw people by the hundreds and hundreds coming in. Now, she didn't say anything. She's praying, and God's showing her this. And then a few minutes later, John comes up to the microphone and starts prophesying everything God showed her. I'm like, okay. But we didn't, we didn't, feel, we didn't feel anything. I mean, he started giving details, and she was so excited. She was like a little kid because after, she's like, you're not going to believe this. God showed me just what John said. That's how the Spirit will work, and it doesn't have to be all this hype and emotion and yeah, 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 yeah. You don't, need a, you, don't, you, don't need, you don't need a bunch of yah ya. No, no. You see what communion does? It brings us back into right perspective. It's not just acknowledging Jesus' sacrifice. Like I said, it is one of the most spiritual things we get to do. See, when we gather around the table, we embrace, we reverence the fact that Jesus actually has restored us to our right place. You're right with God. I know, it, I know back in Charismaniaville days, some of the fire-breathing, sweat-slinging, spit-flying preachers used to say, you got to get right with God. I'm like, man, I'm like, you're going to bust a blood vessel, dude. <laughs> Jesus made me right with him. On my worst day, as long as I stick with him, I'm right. Now, does that mean that he's okay with me being a knucklehead? Absolutely not. And the closer you draw to Jesus, the closer you follow Jesus, he'll deal with that stuff because whom God loves, he disciplines, he corrects, he teaches, he will mold and shape you if you stay with him. Hmm? Today, as we honor and reverence him, we honor and reverence the sacrifice of our king, let the Holy Spirit minister to you today. Embrace what Jesus did for you, what, what he has made available for you. Listen to this. Ephesians chapter 2. Now, I know we were in chapter 1 last week, but I, I'll be all over Ephesians. Are, are y'all like that when you're in it, you know? Because that book, man, you, you, know, you go from some spiritual, uh, multidimensional stuff, and then he gets over in uh, chapter 5, I think, and, his, and he starts dealing with your marriage. Hmm? Oh, yeah. But, but watch this. Chapter 2, verse 4. God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. E watch closely. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved. So you can't, you can't earn this. He made us alive with Christ. Watch this. Remember what I was talking about in, coming out of the three-dimensional thinking a while ago? He made us alive with Christ. He raised, he ra ra what's raised? Is that past tense? He raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. Well, obviously, you ain't sitting in heavenly places in your carnal flesh. So what's in heavenly places? What's sitting in heavenly places? Are you starting to get this a little bit? But as long as we keep God in this little three-dimensional world and try to make him fit our intelligence, you limit God. Matter of fact, in the Old Testament, the psalmist said that the children of Israel, they limited the Holy One of God because of their unbelief. They limited him. If they can limit God. Hmm? See, we have moments like this where we can reverence and acknowledge. As we gather around the table, we have the privilege of drawing closer to him, seeing clearer the things he's already done, made available for us, who we are in him and him in us. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. He made me that way. See, Jesus has already made us alive together with him. He's already raised us up together with him. He makes us sit together in heavenly places in him. Not your flesh, but your spirit. So just maybe, just maybe, if we're in him, when God looks at Jesus, he sees you. Y'all ain't getting this, are you? Are you getting it? Okay, all right. See, we're not just citizens of heaven someday we're not going to be heirs of the kingdom someday we are right now 
We are appointed ambassadors for our king. We are assigned here to a esta- <laughs> This one might stretch you a little bit. I'm doing a little stretching today. <sighs> Listen. As an appointed ambassador to the kingdom, God has assigned us here to establish the very same dominion that our father gave Adam. That's why Paul calls Jesus the last Adam. And if we're in him, we should be establishing, we should be exercising the same authority. That's why Jesus made crazy statements like the things I do, you can do. And then we step out and try to do the thing Jesus did and we weren't successful like Jesus. Aren't you adorable? That's because we're not there yet. We're still growing and being developed in these things. And we step out and try it, and we don't see the same results. Can, can we break it down for just a second? Because we are in Christ, and Christ in, he's in us. But if we keep doing our thing our way and we don't change, but we want more power, God, send the rain, send the fire, send, send the rain, send the fire. I don't know if I want any more, I don't know if I want any more fire. I definitely don't want any rain right now because it turns to snow. See, sometimes, you know know what we we need to do is just take a break and sit at the feet of Jesus and let him change us from the inside out. Isaiah said, here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept, you begin to change into the same image. See, our biggest battle, listen to this, it's not really the devil. It's not really other people. Our biggest, as believers, our biggest battle is simply our refusal to embrace a life beyond humanity. You're born again now. You're citizens of heaven now. The Holy Spirit of God lives in you now. (laughs) Now, your eternity doesn't start when you step over the threshold of heaven and you breathe your last or Jesus calls you home. The minute you give Jesus to you, your, your life and you ask him in, he moves in. And you become a new creation and you're born again then. You are sons and daughters of God that day. Yeah. Can I show you one of my favorite passages in Ephesians? Because, you know, this is the, today as we're letting the word kind of inspire us. When we come to the Lord with our elements, we have this clear picture. Now listen to this passage. It's in Uh, chapter 2, verse 10. I want to use the Amplified for it, though. For we are his workmanship. We are his own master work. The New Living says we are God's masterpiece. Yeah, I sure don't look like it. That's because you're only looking at the natural. You got to see the way he made you. We are a work of art created in Christ. Reborn from above, spiritually transformed and renewed, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared beforehand, taking paths which he set so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready. Made ready. Made re- it's, it's already done. God's already made a life for us. God's already done He's already done everything he's going to do. The covenant is established. All you've got to do is choose to accept it and walk it out. And there's no better place to be reminded of that. No better place for fresh perspective. No better place to draw closer to Jesus than around the Lord's table. You've got that little cup with a busted cracker and some juice. But man, spiritually, all heaven stands at attention when we, when we, crack, the, when we crack the seal on that thing. Listen, when you gather around the Lord's table, angels come, they get involved in stuff. Man, this is is a spiritual thing that we're doing today. Let this communion remind you that you are righteous in God's sight. Jesus made you that way. Huh? See, until you're born again, though, this is the thing you got to understand. Until we embrace the realities of our new world, I, I think sometimes... I know in my own life, Billy, you know what I do? I get comfortable where I'm at. I know I'm saved. I know I'm going to heaven, you know. But since I'm here, 
God has an assignment for me. I know some of y'all think, well, you're the preacher. You got one. No, no. Mm -mm. Wait till you get to chapter 4 of Ephesians. You're going to learn something. You got an assignment. My job is to help you find what yours is, to equip you for it. And sometimes, boom, kick you out the nest. Do you like that sidekick? Yes, sir. See, what we have to do is be willing to embrace the realities of our new nature, God's grace, everything about his world. If, if we don't, if we don't take the time to reshape how we think, all this stuff just stays this mysterious, if it be your will, God. The book is the will of God. All you got to do is get in it. I've been showing you enough stuff today that will absolutely turn your world upside down. What, did you say you want one more? Okay. Second Peter, check this out. I want you to listen to, to Peter's words now. Now, the difference between these two guys, see, Peter actually walked the planet with Jesus. Paul, on the other hand, went to heaven and was taught by Jesus. And, and if you study Paul's writings, he says, whether I was in my body or out of my body, I don't know. But I know I went. He actually says, I went to the third heaven. Wow. I don't know what that's all about. We'll find out one day. But he gives great detail. And then he makes this statement. He said, and I saw some things I can't even tell you about. Probably because our, you know, human intelligence would, would manipulate it and spin it the wrong way. We would try to make it fit our world. There are things happening spiritually that you got to realize, man, when you look at some of the stuff that, that took place, when I, when I think about Daniel and the angel Gabriel showing up to him, I know, I know we're, we're cool with that stuff when we talk about it, but I'm telling you, that kind of world is going on right now. I think it is only because of the grace of God that we don't see a bunch of this stuff because we would lose our minds. We would. I mean, See him picture this, the archangel Gabriel just shows up in your living room. Hey, man, I need about five minutes. And you're like, like Daniel, the Bible says that he hit the ground. Yeah, you would too. And then he begins to give him details about something that was going on. And he was warring in heaven with, other, with, with demons. The prince of Persia. Not the prince on the planet, the prince that was running the prince on the planet. A demon spirit. Gabriel was fighting with him, and Michael had to come help. Fast forward to Jesus, because now all that stuff is under our feet. The enemy and the demons and the powers of darkness have all been defeated, but until the born again know who we are and exercise that, they still wreak havoc in this world. Now, let's listen to Peter's words. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge. Now, this word knowledge is revelation knowledge, not just information. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> As his divine power, what's it say? How much of his divine, how much of his divine power been given to us? All, all things. Say all things. All things. Yeah. He's given us all things that pertain to life and to godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his glory and virtue. Watch this. By which, go on, say it, have been. Say, I got it. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say, you got it. Yeah. 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 By which have been given these exceedingly great and precious promises. Now, what would those exceedingly great and precious promises be? The book. Y'all, come on. It's the Bible. That's God's word. That's his promises. And in Christ, are you in Christ? All, how, many, how many of the promises are yes and amen in Christ? All of them. And he's given you all things. Why? So that through these, through these what? These promises, you may partake. Um, this, we get to partake of God's divine nature. Come on, y'all. I'm, I'm telling you, we, 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 don't, we just see a little bit of this truth. We get to partake of, 
I'm talking about the God that makes planets. We get to partake of his nature. You, you understand? See, one of the most incredible realities about God's nature, about his grace, about his divine power, is that it's 100% based on him, based on his character, on his word. Are you ready for this? Not our conduct. Because if you base it on your conduct and you, you rate your spirituality and your progress on your goodness, then you have to also rate it on your badness. Uh -uh. It's all because of Jesus. See, this is the thing that I love about, you know, what, what Paul does, you know, in his writing. He lets us know in Ephesians that we're in Christ. He provides simplicity and clarity when, when you take the time. He shows us what our new life in Christ looks like. He says anybody united with, this is out of the message. He, I love this statement. He says anybody united with Christ gets a fresh start. Yeah. yeah. The mercies of God are new every day. The grace of God, the favor of God. See, the old life is gone and your new life is underway. See, God did it this way. He settled the relationship part of it between us and him. And what communion does, it reminds us of this. It takes you back. See, and I know some of you all, some of you all been raised in Christ your whole life. You grew up in, in church with Jesus, and you never know. Not that you've done everything right, you know. Kate and I were talking one day. She's been raised in the Lord her whole life, but she had her moments. <laughs> Right? Like, like, like we all have, huh? I, I like to I pick on them sometimes. I remember when, when Kate come and told me that her and Andy were going to get married. And I'm like, mm-mm. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it. I mean, Andy rolled around in a hoopty. <laughs> Gang, gangster, man. You know the car? It was an Impala, wasn't it? You know the cars that, I mean, he was, he was, he was thug life, man. <laughs> no back seat. He was all full of speakers. <laughs> and, and it was a cool ride. And I'm like, Kate. Yeah. And, but now look at what God has done with them. Huh? I mean, he's changing the world with them. So you can't judge people, <laughs> right? <laughs> but but I, did, I did. At that moment, I, I was young, Kate. I did at that. I did. She said, but you did judge them. <laughs> I did, yeah. <laughs> but that's all of us, guys. And what we have to do today, just like with me, I know, see, my, I bring that up because some of you all, you, you know, you walked with God. Some of us, we've done different things. I came out of a different world. Huh? And I understand the sacrifice that Jesus made for me. See, what communion does is it brings you back to that moment. That's the thing I love about communion. That's why I like to talk about it before we take it so that it's fresh in your thinking. I remember when God got me. Man, I didn't want anything to do with the Lord. Nothing. Matter of fact, that night, that Saturday, but the, the Saturday night, some of y'all don't know what favorite watering hole is, but some of you can relate to that. <laughs> we were at our favorite spot. I wasn't, Jesus was not even close to my mind. And then Sunday, I'm walking an aisle giving my life to Jesus. See, this is the thing that, and, and when, you, when you have these moments like this, see, that's why, I, just like the Apostle Paul, it is only by the grace of God that I do what I do. That's all of us, though. And we have this blessed life. I think sometimes it's not just thinking or remembering what God saved us from, but it's what he saved us to. We get to go to heaven. You know, have, you, have you read the book of Revelation? It's, gonna be, it's really going to be pretty cool when, when the gates of the city, one gate is made out of a pearl. One pearl. They carved it. Like, man, God, there's walls with these jewels and stuff. And in one translation, the Bible says in the book of Revelation that the streets are transparent gold. What's that look like? I don't know, but I'm ready. Huh? See, we get to go. To that place. No more pain. Hey, no, no more house cleaning. Huh? Right? 
No more crying, no more, no more death, no more darkness. See, communion stands as that eternal memorial for what Jesus did for us. It takes us back to that incredible moment where he changed our lives forever. And so today as we gather, as we hold those elements, as we embrace the amazing grace that God provided for us, let's remember. Let's remember what he did. This is why God told Paul, my grace is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. See, this is the thing. So today, we embrace this. We honor this. Listen to, uh, I'll leave you with this and we'll take our communion. Honey, can I have mine? If you're in the room and you haven't gotten one, thanks, babe. Just raise your hand. There's ushers that are right around there. They'll take, they'll take care of you. I want you to listen to Peter's words right before we do this. He says this. This is out of the message paraphrase, but I love the wording here. What a God we have. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we've been given a brand new life, and we have everything to live for, including a future in heaven, and the future starts now. See, the wonderful thing about Jesus is this. He made, it, he made all of this available for us. This is why the Apostle Paul said, as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And make no mistake, he's coming back. And he's coming back for this glorious church. And so today, it is truly our privilege to be able to gather in his presence. Can I do this real quick before we take communion? If you're in the room and you've never given your life to Jesus, Maybe today will be your first communion you get to take. See, communion is only for the born again. If you're not born again and you take it, it's just a religious ritual. It doesn't mean anything. But if you're born again and you belong to Jesus, it means everything. And so if you're in the room, or maybe you're listening or watching today and you haven't taken that step of faith, well, say the prayer with us. Let's help them, y'all. Everybody together, Lord Jesus, come into my life and make me new. And from this day forward, Jesus is my Lord. Heaven is my home, and I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, and so if that's you today, welcome to the family. Amen. Now for all of us, let's partake of this together. Lord Jesus, this simple little cracker, according to your word, it reflects, it reminds, it stands for it echoes through eternity that your body was brutally broken so that ours could be restored. We honor you today, Jesus. We love you. And we do this in your remembrance. Amen. Now, Lord Jesus, this cup representing your blood that was shed for all humanity, giving us eternal life with you, a home in heaven, recreating us into these new beings, sons and daughters of God. Today, Jesus, we honor you. We love you. Thank you so much for coming, for saving us, for giving us eternal life. We take this today in your remembrance, Jesus. Amen. And Father, for every person here today, those listening, those watching, Holy Spirit, as we embrace our journey of faith on the planet, always keep this before us, Lord that it is only because of your sacrifice, it is only because of your grace that we are able to do these things. So we give you all the praise, Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Guys, have a wonderful week. If you brought your tither offering, just drop them on the way out or go to our online giving. Uh, we'll see you next Sunday with part three. Don't forget your homework. God bless you all. 
If you enjoyed today's podcast, please be sure to click on the subscribe button. For more information on Victory Life Church, check us out at victorylifeky.com. Thank you so much for listening.